Alright y'all, today we are playing pacifist runs in Dark and Darker. My goal here is to escape without doing any damage to any enemies. As you can see above, I ultimately figure out the secret to this is torches. With torches you can truly do anything. First though, we will go through a few of my runs before I figured out this secret, just to show you all the struggle. This is one of the worst spawns in the game, to be honest. There are enemies on either side, nowhere to retreat towards. No nearby doors to use to lock enemies, except the one that traps you in your spawn room. And player spawns not too far away, in much better places. Even when I'm not playing pacifism, I have big trouble with it. With ranger, your healing is slower, and over time. Not all at once. So I go down in just a few hits. They really benefit from positioning. And this just ain't it. Just running straight to the door here has honestly been more consistent than fighting my way out. So I did do that in all future games as well. What comes next can still be tricky though. The area with a big dip and a trap on the floor is a great one to shake any enemies though. They hurt themselves running into it and often lose you down there for some reason. One of the biggest sources of damage in this challenge are enemies hitting you while you're trying to open a door. And so, shaking off anything following you to one is essential, making these areas pivotal. Of course, I did not quite realize this yet early in the pacifist runs, and after getting rid of these guys I decide to immediately run into some others and get myself stuck in the same situation. Generally at doors, only one enemy will hit you, as space gets limited and they end up lining up. This normally lets you get through at full health regardless. Sadly in this situation, I get hit by a ranged enemy, and then one coming in close as I go for the door, stacking the hits and ultimately killing me. In order to survive a pacifist run, we have to really learn enemy behavior, as we are just living among them the entire time. After a few more tries of pacifism, I have decided that I had to illuminate this situation. If I can see everything, there is no possible way I can miss something, right? The hunter, or whatever their name was, allows me to buy a nearly full inventory of torches. This meant that I had to sit there with that, and then let them restock so that I could buy them out once again to begin my quest. Something I'm sure few people dared to do. It is only people who have never seen this that would call the High Roller Dungeon intense. I pity them. There was a much better use of their gold right in front of them, and yet it did not catch their eye. One thing that really helps this build out is the fact that torches are reusable. If you throw one on the ground, you are able to just walk over and pick it up. This allows you to throw it again in the future, once they have helped you make the area safe. On top of that, they never burn out. Somehow, I am no wizard, but I am able to make a torch that stays lit even underwater. Something really amazing. While they may not have much of an impact on those standard enemies that spawn in the dungeon, other players are mesmerized by them. I know I can't help but stare at a moving light source, be it a streak in the sky or a candle flame just in front of me. In fact, other players often cannot believe the level of power you bring to the game, and often become your followers. They will do things like bring you loot or fight enemies for you. All you have to do is give them a sufficient supply of torches in return. Now, some may say this violates the terms of pacifism, getting somebody else to fight for them. Luckily, we can point to real life pacifists as examples, who, more often than not, are willing to call the cops. Now that I think about it, this game is kinda dark. Fuck. 
They just kind of stroll into these people's caves, kill them and steal their shit, and fight over it before coming back to do the same thing again. The cleric is literally just a missionary. Yo, what the fuck? Alright, well, not much lore has been released about the game. Maybe I can pretend the enemy is here. That looks like they have adapted to the environment and built things. Have actually been pulled in here themselves. And are doing the same thing as us. I mean, mimics literally exist, right? There's no way those coexist with a form of organized life down here. Who the fuck would let that happen? Another point though, the enemies in this place also hit floor traps just as much as I do. So they obviously don't have intimate knowledge of them. In this game, the circle is starting to get a little close. And it won't be too long until the exit gates start spawning. On top of that, I get stabbed by some asshole. I am busy throwing more torch offerings to my follower, and then meet a new friend, and run up to greet them and then boom, knife to the face. Now I need to eat some of the torches myself just to survive. I give them as many torch offerings as I can, but they don't want it. This is one potential outcome of pacifism. For some reason, people will lash out at you regardless of what you do. It is best to move on in a situation like this. And luckily, my clerical follower protects me as I go to collect my offering, so that I can potentially use it on the next person. Anyways, now that the battle has concluded, I'm going to talk about something completely unrelated to pass the time, until something interesting happens. This game is so fast paced and yet at the same time, not. Definitely interesting. Anyways, let's take a moment to talk about hierarchy. I describe hierarchy as when one social class defines itself and another social class it controls through bureaucracy. Cis people define trans people through things like the World Health Organization, for example. Describing the conditions under which we can be diagnosed as trans and transition and such. Similar for holistic and autistic people, and many other examples. I just happen to have a lot of experience with these ones personally. Breaking out of hierarchy means taking control over our own identities. So bureaucracy. Bureaucracy is a method of measuring how close this person of an outside defined class is to the ideal of that class. To be able to interact with them in a generalized case without knowing them as individuals and all that. Teacher and student relations have a very good example of this with the grading system. A teacher creates a set of points to measure with questions on a test or homework or whatever, and then creates their image of an ideal student through an answer key and then simply rates how close a student is to that ideal at many points. This strips the context of how they learn the info, how they remember it, how long it took for them to figure out the question, and just about everything else. This happens in multiple layers until eventually you reach GPA, which allows some assholes setting rules for college admissions to determine whether or not you get in without ever interacting with you. This method of processing information is the basis of bureaucracy, and thus hierarchy, and the basis of anarchism is the abolition of this. Instead, we could use things like consensus. Well, with that all done, let's recap what we did. We ran around in a circle, looting stuff while our follower finished off all of the enemies for us. While well, I could have looted the rest of the items there, I think we can let our follower get them in return for our job all done. I also spot an exit gate and decide that I may as well get out while I can. Pacifism is a hard and dangerous job. I need to take breaks when I can, after all. On top of that, I used up almost all of my torch offerings during this, so we'll need to spend some time recharging before our next outing. Luckily, with the magic of turning off my recording software, we can jump to some random point in the future where I turn it back on.
We happen to be fully rested and, once again, fully equipped with torches. What a coincidence. With one escape under my belt, and all the knowledge gained from my earlier tries at pacifism, I gain even more confidence here. I don't even need to look at enemies to tell where they are or when they are going to attack. I find that confidence is one of the most useful tools in this game. With dying and losing all your items as a possibility, I find myself wanting to move slowly and carefully, but any hesitation allows enemies to group up and start cornering you. On top of that, actually going closer to enemies to bait them to swing and slow themselves down makes a huge difference as well. So if any of y'all want to do this when the playtest comes back, my recommendation is to full send it every time until full sending it works. Not like you have anything to lose when doing pacifism as well. Learning is never wasted. For more PvP oriented runs, you can potentially use enemies to force another player to drop a fight. There's an extra source of damage. On top of that, using the environment around you to your advantage becomes easier and more effective the more deeply you know it. Being able to run down an escaping player, trying to use the basic enemies as meat shields, because you understand them, is always a nice time. And I still make mistakes though, even with all my practice. The flying assholes tend to give me the most trouble as when they attack, they often end up on the other side of you. This can result in them blocking you without you even realizing, and what seems like potentially getting inside of you. You can hear their screech and know when they are going to attack, but it can be hard to avoid once it reaches that point. My only recommendation for them is to keep moving. If there is one butt right behind you at a door, try to find another door if possible. They are slower than you are, so all you have to do is keep moving. Anyways, I'm starting to get tired and hungry in real life, and I'm running out of bullshit to say. Sometimes stuff pops into my head, like second wind is just when your depression gets depression, and I start writing it down only to delete it. But at this point, I may as well say it. If you're still watching this, I must say I'm impressed. Why, I'm not sure, but I'm sure you've done a good job on something today, and I'm proud of you for that, even if it's just surviving. Also, for some reason, I come across a cleric like three minutes into the game just chilling in the spawn area. Strange, but I'm not going to complain, as it's content. More life experiences to sell in exchange for the potential to eat another day or somewhere to sleep. Anyone else hanging by a thread? I'm just joking, I know you are. We all are. If you weren't, I would just be confused at this point. Like have you not been paying attention to what's going on? Are you some confused Christian who stumbled in thinking the rapture is going to save them? Anyways, I decided to take a small break after all that. I'm now writing again and moving on from that topic. On top of all of that, it seems like there is one singular universal thing in this game. When you finally feel like there are no enemies around, and that you are safe, and so finally go to place down a fire, one runs right up to you. If I wanted to, I could spam like 15 clips of that happening, but we need to focus on this 1010 pacifist gameplay. Like, uh, building a fire? Why? Wow. We probably should have been talking about this stuff a little longer, huh? Luckily, the campfire is able to heal roughly a third of my health, and in doing so, give me the ability to survive roughly one extra hit. This will allow me to get all my loot out. It will go a long way towards being able to buy more torches. They are only three gold a stack, and honestly, that really isn't much. One or two full gold bags is all it takes for a full inventory. Anyways, watch me give this enemy the pacifist run special. Just lead them into a spawn room and just leave. 
locking the door behind me. I'm not sure whether this is intended or not, to be honest, but it definitely works. Also is a nice surprise for whoever is low health and comes in there to heal next. I may be playing a pacifist, but that doesn't mean I can't be an asshole. In fact, it kinda is a requirement. I mean, look at Gandhi. Anyways, we are approaching the end game here. So I start looking for an exit by running around every area open to me. Nobody has cleared the enemies in this top area with the magic user though, which makes this dangerous. I have to close the doors behind me, which means I have less places to escape to. On top of that, enemies have piled up on nearly every possible exit. At this point as other players, or just me, I've trapped them there. This means that every time I open a door, it could be death. I have no concept of fear though, and so just plunge into each door as fast as I can. I have no concept of fear though, and so just plunge into each door as fast as I can. I am almost out of health, so I can't take the risk of being hit from behind. I feel like I must be the last person alive as I haven't seen anyone in quite a while. Rip that cleric, they were a good friend. Sadly, the darkness consumes us all eventually. This gives me ample time to loot chests without much of a worry though. Well, it is about time to get finished up and go through my typical video ending routine. I know it can be hard, but make sure to brush your teeth. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and the second best time to plant a tree is today. Even if your mouth health hasn't been the best, work at it now. Anyways, I stream over at Twitch under at RoseThornRanger. The link for that is in the description. I talk about all kinds of things, especially stuff related to being trans, neurodivergent, a communist, an anarchist, and having a sense of humor that is dry.